These are very trying times for state government with the pandemic throwing the economy and the budget into disarray. No new aid from the feds in sight, all with serious consequences for your schools and other local services. Let's discuss that aspect of the crisis and more with the Speaker of the Massachusetts House, Representative Robert DeLeo of Winthrop. Mr. Speaker, good morning and welcome. Thank you. It's good to see you, although remotely it's uh, a sign of the times and wish I could be there personally, but hopefully relatively soon we maybe we can do that again. Most of my guests say outside of the improvement, they don't notice the difference doing it remotely. <laughs> so, well, that's fine. So, look, before we get into the, these pressing local issues, I've got to ask you, because as we're taping Friday morning, this news is breaking here. What went through your mind when you heard the president had tested positive? As soon as I got up this morning and, and heard that, quite frankly, I was, uh, for whatever reason, I was somewhat in, in shock in terms of what, you know, was what had, what had, what had happened. I think most importantly, I think that, uh, that he and his wife, um, you know, feel well right now and will continue to improve as, as, as time uh, g yeah. goes on. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see the effect on the campaign, quite frankly, especially with only about a month to go in terms of two weeks. But I think most importantly, our, our thoughts would be on, on, on their health. Well, I certainly second that, that thought about a speedy recovery for all concerned. I did want to ask you, though, we were talking before, uh, beforehand, Winthrop, your hometown, remains on the short list of communities deemed at the highest risk of COVID-19 transmission statewide. I'd like your observations of why that is. I know you're plugged into your own community. Uh, have a lot of people in Winthrop uh, taken to sharing the president's disdain for mask wearing? I think to a certain extent in my talking to the um, uh, uh, folks who are, you know, the police chief and the, and the folks at the health um, uh, department, um, I think it's their feeling uh, that there's probably a little bit too much um, in terms of gatherings probably a little bit too much in terms of people uh, not wearing um, uh, masks. I yeah, think that yeah. generally and overwhelming people have been very good in regards to this. Uh, but unfortunately, um, we've, we, we've had a, 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 a spike as a result of, I think, of those two uh, okay. actions that are being taken. All right. Well, as we taped here on Friday morning, there was still no sign of further relief aid from the feds. And this latest package that they can't seem to agree on was supposed to include badly needed aid to states and cities. Mr. Speaker, what does it mean to us here in Massachusetts if we don't get that money? It's very concerning, obviously. I think that, um, you know, this has been an interesting ride in terms of our economy here in Massachusetts. We had a, uh, we started the process back in December with the consensus revenue, wherein we heard from some of the uh, top economists and, you know, uh, throughout the uh, Commonwealth. And at that time, you know, things were going well. Uh, in addition to that, then we had the governor's budget, um, which, uh, which was uh, rolling along. And, um, you know, in terms of us taking it up a look, you know, look, look pretty good. And then, you know, suddenly COVID-19 um, hit. So what we saw very quickly in the matter of a month, shall we say, was, you, you know, very good economic condition uh, to, quite frankly, a substantial uh, shortfall. As a matter of fact, the latest numbers that we have is anywhere from two to four to six billion dollars Right now, in terms of the uh, in terms of a shortfall, and probably, if I had to uh, guess, it would probably more in the four to six billion dollar wow. uh, raise. But in addition to that, what concerns me greatly is the fact that John, if you look at our unemployment rate prior to this starting, we were one of the lowest in the country, uh, less than three percent. Now. We were, uh, I don't think we still are, but we were at the, at the highest of over 16. We had a good reprieve in the sense of about five points uh, reduction, but we still have a, a long way, way, way to go. But uh, you, you hit it on the head. Um, without the assistance in, in, from, from, from Washington, uh, which we're uh, very much depending upon, which hasn't been forthcoming so far, uh, we're very concerned. Well, I have to take my break, but very briefly, uh, 
I, I know you don't really like to speculate, but I know people are wondering, in this worst case scenario, are we talking significant layoffs at the municipal level, teachers, police, fire, that kind of thing? Well, I think what we're talking about, we'll know probably a little bit more actually next week. Next okay. week, we're having the economists uh, again come back for another round table with, Secret with, with, with Chair Michael Witz, who on behalf of the House has done a great job, as well as uh, the Chair of uh, Ways and Means in the Senate, uh, Rodericks, and Secretary of Administration in, in Heffernan have all been uh, doing um, their best. So there are, there are a number of things, you know, going on. Obviously, Washington is, is by far probably uh, the key. Uh, okay. It was my feeling that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Labor Day would, what was going to be the, by the time of which I would, I, I would see it. Then I felt, well, we're coming closer to an election. It's blue and red states that are both facing this problem, that this could be a good uh, 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 tool in, in anyone's uh, election, running for president, Senate, whatever, whatever it may be, uh, but it hasn't happened. It's good to see that the Secretary of Treasury and uh, the Speaker of the House, Pelosi, are both uh, talking right now, but as of right now, there's been no resolution.